you are listening to By the Book, because if you don't look at the world through the Bible, you will never see it right. Welcome to By the Book. This is Alan Griffith, your host for episode 10. I'm glad you're listening. I want to talk to you about some important things today. Last time, we uh, talked a little bit about our response to culture. And as we enter into 2022, we're going to see more challenges in our culture. And I want to spend a little bit of time focusing on one area, and that area is abortion. Now, before we get to that, I want you to just think about that word culture for a moment. It's a term, if you look at it, that has a religious term in it, culture. And the first part of it is cult. Now, we use the term culture, we throw the term around sometimes without really giving thought to what it is. Now, on the surface, it's the world that we have talked about. It's business and religion and entertainment and education and all those kinds of things. But all of those things form our culture. Now, culture, again, has that word cult in it, and that's important to understanding culture and how it works. The term cult or culture actually goes back to the Latin. There's the term cultus, culter. Both of those terms, if we trace them back to their origin, to the depth of their meaning, will take us to the concept of worship. It'll take us to the concept of our view of God. And the reason we use the term culture, the reason that term was developed is simply For this reason, all of those things of the world that we've discussed, business, education, entertainment, the whole thing actually actually is an outgrowth of our worship and view of God. Why has our country changed so much and so rapidly? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because we, as a nation, as a people, we have walked away from God. We do not worship the God of the Bible anymore. And when you walk away from God and you walk away from his word, it will dramatically affect your view of life. It'll affect how you act. It'll affect what you do. It will affect your standards and your values. And so our culture is in trouble because we are moving further and further away from God. Now, one of the things that illustrates that is this whole matter of abortion. You may know that right now the Supreme Court is considering a Mississippi law that bans abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy. Now, some people might say, well, that's, you know, that's pretty, pretty early, you know, and, uh, uh, that soon, you know, an abortion has to take place, and after that, an abortion could not take place. Well, listen, I want you to know something, and we're going to see it later in Scripture. From the moment of conception, the unborn child is an individual person, an individual human life. And that Mississippi law is saying, well, for 15 weeks, you can go ahead and kill and destroy that life. Now, that's, that's an improvement on where we are in the world today. But listen, if you don't see life through the scriptures, uh, you'll never understand it. And that's where we are today. But, you know, all of this with abortion in our country really goes back in people's minds to a case back in the 70s. That case is known as Roe v. Wade, and a decision was made in that case on January 22nd, 1973, and I want to talk about that. At that time, most states had restrictions on abortion, and at that time, there was a young lady, 22 years old. She was not married. Her name was Norma McCorvey. She got pregnant, and she wanted an abortion. She could not get an abortion in Texas because Texas law at that time 
only allowed abortion to save the life of the mother. No other reason. And by the way, if there's a valid reason for an abortion, that would be the only one that I could imagine. So Norma McCorvey went to court. She went under the name of Jane Roe, and she sought an injunction against Henry Wade. Now, Henry Wade was the state attorney for Dallas County, Texas, and Norma McCorvey took the the name Jane Roe to make her case that protected her privacy and so on. So the case became known as Roe v. Wade. That's how it is described today. Well, the court held, uh, held court, heard the case, and came out with a seven to two decision that said the Texas law was unconstitutional. Well, what that did is resulted in uh, laws all over the country being basically dissolved by the Supreme Court. And uh, states' rights were taken away, and the Supreme Court now basically became a legislative body. Now, the case was argued on the basis of the 14th Amendment. And the 14th Amendment basically says that a state cannot make or enforce laws That would deprive a person of life, liberty, or property without due process, nor could they deny any person equal protection of the law. And out of the 14th Amendment, the Supreme Court invented what I would call the right to privacy. And that opened the door to what became, in some years, a million or more abortions in this country. The argument was all about the woman. The argument was all about the mother. We would ask the question, what about the child? What about the child? The court decided that the unborn child was not considered a person until birth. Now that opened the door to the destruction of human life. And we have suffered from that decision ever since. Now, today, most states do limit abortion after 24 weeks. And abortion can be done with a pill today, up to 10 weeks. It can be done with vacuum aspiration. It can be done with basically scraping the child uh, uh, out of the mother's womb. 24 weeks. Do you know what a baby's like at at 24 weeks of pregnancy? Typical child, 11 inches long, weigh about one pound. Toes, fingers, face formed, eyelashes, eyebrows, hair, able to hear. As a matter of fact, the child in the womb at 24 weeks is able to hear and identify sounds, even the voices of that child's parents so that after the child is born, it would be able to recognize that voice from having been in the womb. And yet today, in most states, an abortion can take place up till 24 weeks. Did you know? I didn't realize it, but I have found out that in seven states in our country, Legal abortion can be up to 40 weeks. Up to 40 weeks. Colorado, New Hampshire, New Mexico, Oregon, Vermont, Alaska, New Jersey. In those states, there's basically no restrictions on abortion. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. How did we get there? Well, listen, we got there because as a nation, uh, we've walked away from God. The Bible has something to say about abortion, and it has something to say about life. Now, I want to read to you from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 35 and following. It says, And the angel answered and said unto her, 
This is the angel talking to Mary. The angel said this, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now we're going to come back and talk more about the Lord Jesus in a moment. But listen to verse 36. The angel said this to Mary, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. So the angel at this point identifies that Mary's cousin Elizabeth has conceived, and the angel says she has conceived a son. Now, verse 39, excuse me, verse 38. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. So Mary, hearing this word from the angel that Elizabeth is carrying a son and has been pregnant for six months. Verse 41, it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost and spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. I want to tell you, that's quite a statement. That's quite a statement about life. It's quite a statement about the unborn child. The unborn child, the angel said, at six months of pregnancy, was a son that had been conceived. And when Mary comes to visit Elizabeth and she speaks, the Bible says that child recognized that voice, heard that message, and leaped with joy in the womb. Now, that's quite a statement. It's a statement about life. Now, I want to, we're going to come back to Luke in a moment, but I want to go back to the book of Exodus. Back in Exodus, we have the Old Testament law. Now, we don't go by the Old Testament law. However, there are truths that are revealed sometimes in the Old Testament law that we need to give heed to because uh, the truth underlying some of these laws is still factual. So in Exodus 21, the law is talking about a woman carrying a child and men getting into a conflict where the woman is hurt. Now listen to what it says. I'm in Exodus 21, beginning in verse 22. It says, if men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her. So here are men who somehow are in conflict. They end up hurting a pregnant woman, and she loses the baby. What's the text go on to say? It says, yet no mischief follow. In other words, she loses the baby, but, but the baby lives. She gives birth, but the baby lives. It says, he, the man who causes the problem, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. So here's the situation. Ladies carrying a child. Somehow she is hurt by a man. She gives early birth to the child, but the child lives. 
All right, the man is going to be punished for that. He's going to have to pay a fine as the judges determine. Now, verse 23 says this, and if any mischief follow. In other words, same situation. The lady gives birth early to the child and mischief follows. In other words, the child dies. Listen to what it says. And if any mischief follow, then shalt thou give life for life. And the verse goes on with further description. Life for life. The child is viewed in the scriptures as a life, an individual human life. And if that child is born early and dies because of someone hurting the woman, the Old Testament law called for the life of the one who destroyed the baby's life to be taken. It's life for life. Now, let's come back to Luke chapter 1, and I want to pick up in verse 26, because this is when the angel talks to Mary about her conceiving the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a woman espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. What a statement from the angel to Mary. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. That's our Savior. That's our Savior. Our Savior was born of a virgin. And we often make much of that, the virgin birth. That's, that's good theology to believe that and to understand that. But you know, the miracle was not a birth. I often say uh, a birth for the child is simply a change in location. It's not a change in that child's being. It's not a change in that child's personhood. That child doesn't become a person at birth. Life begins at conception. That's when the life, the human life of the Lord Jesus Christ began. Conceived by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. And at that moment of conception is when life began for the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth and in humanity. I want you to know that is when life still begins. So here we have court arguments about when a woman is allowed to destroy the child, to kill the unborn. It is nothing less than a murder because the unborn is innocent life. People say, well, what about if the, if the girl is raped or the woman is raped? Well, you know, 
that's a violent act. We should not follow it with another violent act and destroy the child. I would say this, kill the rapist. Don't kill the child. The child should live. Now, we can't see this whole thing right unless we see it through the scriptures. But the Bible is clear, and if we ever will come back to the Bible, we will do away with abortion, perhaps except for the life of the mother. But abortion is wrong, and you and I will never see it right unless we see it through the scriptures. Lord bless you.